We are 12 days, 13 hours, 31 minutes away from the Indy 500 with thousands of race fans expected to fill the seats across the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now for one family, it's a bittersweet experience. Tonight our Dave Calabro shares how the family of late IndyCar driver Dan Weldon is using racing to heal. Hi everybody, 10 years ago we had one of the most dramatic finishes in Indy 500 history. J.R. Hildebrand, a 23 year old rookie, was winning the 500, coming to the final turn, but he smacked the wall here in turn number four. Dan Weldon came shooting through the debris to become a two time champion of the 500. Months later, he was tragically killed. And tonight we remember the legacy of Dan Weldon with his wife, Susie. St. Petersburg, Florida. This is where Dan Weldon called home. And this is where he fell in love with a girl named Susie. And I still remember him there standing with Michael. He had this like black, like longer kind of like pea coat on and the collar was like up. <laughs> of and his hair was all, you know. Of course I thought he was super handsome, but it wasn't like in a million years, I kind of thought I would be on this journey now. <laughs> she was doing PR for one of Dan's sponsors and helping with Dan's busy schedule. Soon the two became an item, and the wedding followed at this fancy St. Pete Hotel. The couple had two boys, Sebastian and Oliver. Ten years ago, life in the fast lane was amazing for Dan and Susie. It's one of my greatest memories, for sure. Weldon won his second Indy 500. Here's my job for so many years was, this is the protocol. You win the race, you go here, you did it, and I was like, oh my god, I don't know what to do, because it was just so cool. Five months later, uh, a horrific crash took Dan's life. He was a true champion and a gentleman on and off the track. He was killed during the final IndyCar race of the season in Las Vegas. Ten years have passed, but the pain is still fresh. In my mind, there are sometimes I, I feel no time has passed at all because you have moments where you're kind of in and out of grief and I have two boys that need me and you get up and you just keep going. Now, did I have days and, and you know, even the first couple years where it was just like, I like... Horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. And I relied on a lot of people to kind of get me through. My name is Oliver. Susie and her boys are very close. Hello. Testing, testing, <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. As I found out, the boys have traits oh, just like their dad. Yeah, old guy. <laughs> um, excuse me. Starting with those big personalities. Actually, he's only, like, what, year four? Yeah. And, you know, now they're racing and, and that's Wait a minute, another. did you just tell everybody that your, your two boys uh, are yes, racing? Yes, Dave. It's, Susie, what are we doing? I know. That's right, they're mm -hmm. taking after their dad. On most weekends, you'll find them in go-karts with mom watching from the pits. You know, I find a lot of comfort at the track with my boys. I, I don't really know how to explain it because it feels like home and, and watching them out there is really something special. And people asked, how can you let them race? And I always say, it's not really my decision. It's theirs, it's always been theirs. It's dangerous and I think the farther you go, the stakes obviously get a lot higher. So it's something that you do think about. But racing is such a different thing. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Ten years later, the legacy of Dan Weldon is alive. The boys have natural talent. Holy smokes, where'd you buy all these? Um, I got them from eBay. They've already won many go-kart titles. Is he, is he always a clown? Yeah. The trophy case is overflowing. It's heavy. Baby boy. Clearly, the Indy 500 is the goal. It's in the back of your mind, you know? It's not the reason. Oh yeah, that's a cool helmet. I'm gonna race with this when I get older. They obviously want to, that's the path, you know? It would be super special. Susie Weldon is more than a survivor. She's thriving and enjoying raising two young men. 
I, I can say that those two boys have been my saving grace like a million times over. They are such fun and I mean, and times that's stressful. <laughs> yeah. That is how Dan lived. He could literally put the cards on the table and say, I did it all and I have no regrets, you know? And that to me is just a life well lived. As we watch the next generation carry on. I'm here to help them fulfill their dream, whatever it is. Just like their dad would have wanted.